Hey everyone and welcome back. So this video is going to be our project cleanup. We're going to have everything hopefully resolved by the end of this video. First thing I wanted to do is to get our widget working again. So if we go into our blueprints folder and we, we're looking at the WBP underscore HUD, it's just not updating the score because if we remember in the graph we have set the player reference to be specifically of the BP underscore player type. So this isn't going to be working because we're not using that anymore. We're using the one derived from our C++ class. So what we can do, uh, we should just be able to change this to type of generic pawn because we're still using a pawn. It doesn't need to know anything about it. So we can set this to be a pawn. And in the event graph, uh, that should still work because we don't need to cast then. We can get rid of this. We can set the pawn type to be what we are controlling. So anything that we're controlling is going to be of type pawn doesn't need to know anything about any of the specific variables or functions inside of the CR pawn compared to the BP pawn and that just means that it's going to be able to get our location and update the score accordingly. So that should now work in fact with that simple fix and quick change and we can use the same one. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, just a visual thing, uh, playing about with things, is I'm going to make that orange. Why not? Just so it stands out a bit more. Uh, we can test this from here because we don't need to actually complete levels but we now have our working score. So step one complete. We now need to do the level selection functionality in C++. And then that's pretty much everything done. So to do this in fact we need to go to our game mode and we can open this up from here. And like I mentioned several videos ago I don't want to just run through the the lines of code which are the fix. I'm going to go through the kind of mental process I went through trying to work out why on earth the level select wasn't working in editor. Um, to begin with, I thought it was broken altogether, and then I found a few things online about the, the prefix, and I found out that that's uh, an editor-only thing. So then I tested it in the standalone, and that worked. And then obviously since that, as I said, we've got a fix, which is what we're going to get to by the end of this video. So what we have is if we go to our check level function, I'm also going to show you now a different way. We've been in the past using the UE underscore log, which is pretty good, it's handy, but it does print some logs. So it means you have to have the log at the bottom open all the time or refer to it after play. Now something I found really handy whilst debugging through this is using the G engine um, add to screen. So if we start using this, uh, what I want to find out first of all is the current index because that's why I thought initially everything was going wrong. So if we get the G engine, so we're going to do the add on screen debug message and you're going to be seeing a lot of these because I started putting these everywhere trying to uh, fix whatever was going wrong. Uh, we want to set the color here. So in fact, I think this is the scale or location. So say minus one and then 15.0 F. And if you just Google this and Unreal C++, you'll find out exactly what these overrides are. But the main thing is we're setting in the location and now we're setting the color, sorry. So we're gonna give it a color, um, F color. Just make this yellow because it's nice and easy to see. And then we want to give it some text. So the text for this is, as I said, my first line of thought was that the index was wrong. So we're going to get the index first of all. So we're going to say the index before we find the levels. Index before find equals add a space after that. And then to add a string variable in, we're going to say plus f string. We're going to convert this from an integer and we're going to pass in the current level index. So hopefully that makes sense so far what we're doing and why. So we're just printing a string to the screen and finding out what the current level index is. Now, once we've done the levels.find, the current index is being updated. So I'm going to do the same again and find out what happens after that. And this is kind of the first hint of what's going wrong and where. So just change the before to after. And if we save this, go back and compile, and we should see some messages on the screen when we press play now. Okay, so that didn't work. So we'll show the log and find out what happened. Current level index, undeclared, identify. So always good to put the D in index. We'll go back and again, we'll hit compile. Just another spelling mistake on my behalf. Um, I think that's the same for all of them. Yep. So now if we press play, we can do this from the engine. Uh, so there we go. I want you to see, we can see that the index uh, before is zero and the index after with a capital F is minus one. So we can start seeing that part of the problem is that when we get down here and we're trying to find the current level index, uh, we're trying to get from the levels array because it is indeed minus uh, less than the number of elements in the array. It's trying to get minus one from the array. So that's why it's not working. Now, again, if we do this quickly from the standalone game, what we'll see is that before and after the find, we are returning zero. So if we press play, we can see index after index before is zero. So that means we can actually load level 
one essentially as these um, zero element of the array. Okay, so that's putting us on the right track. So now we need to know why that's happening. This for me came down just to programming experience and just common sense of the, the kind of things that the compiler will be doing uh, and just kind of um, an understanding of what's going to happen. So there's no way I really debugged through this. Uh, I just worked out that because we're getting the correct value here and the wrong value here, obviously we're setting the values here. And what's happening is because we cannot find the current level name, it's trying to, the first thing it's doing is finding the current level name that we pass in, which is the map name that we already have access to. It hasn't found that. So rather than providing a legitimate value for the current level index, it's just defaulting to minus one. So the next thing we want to do is find out what the map name is and why this is happening. So what we're going to do now is above this. Um, and in fact, we can comment these out because we already know where these are going wrong. So we can now step back and take a look at the current level name. So we're going to use this actually. We'll take a lot of this, paste this here. So we'll do another on-screen debug and we will print out level name. And this time we don't need to do the string conversion so we can get rid of that and we can get rid of the bracket. In fact, we can just delete that, it's faster. And we'll type current level name. With that done, head back over and we can now look inside of the engine after compiling. Okay, so if we press play, we can now see that the level name is ued pi underscore zero underscore main one. So that's exactly what I said in the previous video because we could see that actually happening down here in the log. So if we play this again through the standalone game, I just want to kind of confirm every time I'm making these changes and uh, adding the logs that it's doing one thing in one version of the engine and one thing when you play it through a different version or different outputs at least. So here we're getting exactly what we expected and what we want, which is the main one. So again, this is where there's not very much information about this online, but I did manage to find something which uh, mentions about the prefix happening just in the editor. Now, another really interesting thing about this is if we look at the blueprints, uh, remember we're doing this in our BP underscore game mode. We actually have our get level name somewhere in here. Okay, so there we go, get current level name. Now, the interesting thing is I never realized this before. I didn't actually know blueprints did this until I started having this problem. The blueprint node automatically removes the prefix from the name. Now, if we untick that and use this again, this will actually give us exactly the same prefix and exactly the same problem. That's ticked by default, so it's not something I ever looked at. I've never dropped that down before, and uh, it was quite a, an interesting thing to discover. However, and this is of course where lies the problem, the C++ version, the get world, get map name, doesn't have that option. There are no arguments that we pass in here. So we have to take this away manually because it doesn't apparently have a get level name equivalent in C++. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back over to our game mode now, the header file, and we're going to create our own function to do this. So this is what this whole big lead up has been uh, moving on towards, but hopefully this hasn't just been a random detour for you. Hopefully you find this useful because this is something that took me a little while to debug through because it's not something I was aware of being a problem in the engine. And this isn't overly important because, as I said, if you're making this and you build this game out, then no one's going to know the difference. But for editing and testing and uh, prototyping and things, it's a huge problem that you can't do this in the editor, um, passing in and getting names and stuff. So we're going to make a function here. We're going to make it public and it's going to be of type f string because we want to return a string. So we're going to give this um, the variable type f string and we're going to call this clean level string. Now this does need to have something passed in and we're just going to pass in a u object. Uh, we'll call this the world context object. These names don't mean too much, uh, but this is when I was looking at the functionality we're going to be using in a moment. This is what they called it on the Unreal documentation. So we're just going to go over that for now. And we want to go back to the CPP and implement this function. So down here, slightly different to what we've been used to. And this is another reason I thought it was useful to include this is that this might be the first time we've not used a void function. So we're going to use a string function because we've just declared this to be a string. Same setup though. So we're going to give this the A CR game mode and then ACR game mode again. We need to pass in the argument that we've already created, so the U object, and this will be the world context object. Now for the functionality, what we want to find out is whether we have access to the G engine, which we kind of already know we do because we've been printing out to the, uh, the strings that way, but we'll double check here. And if so, we want the F string variable again, and we're gonna make two local F strings. The first one, we want to store the prefix, which is what we want to get rid of. So prefix equals G engine, um, we're going to say get world from context object and we're going to pass in the world context object that we have created at the top world context object and we want the streaming levels prefix okay so 
All of these, uh, this is a function built into gengine, and this is actually a predefined variable inside of uh, the gengine as well. So it already knows that there's that prefix and we have direct access to that. So when we have that, the next thing we want to do is get our f string. The next thing we want to do is create our second f string, and we'll call this one level name. And this one is going to be our world map name. So same as we've done previously, really. Okay, and with that, we are just going to return our level name. And we want to right chop, so cut things off from the right, uh, right chop. And this is just a functionality you have within strings. And we want to right chop the prefix, or from the prefix, the length of it. And that is it. So we're getting the length of the prefix, we're chopping that from the right to get rid of it. And that is going to be, um, obviously, when you're using a function which has a variable type return, we need to return this. So we're going to pass that back as the level name minus the prefix. And that's obviously fine if we have access to the G engine. If not, then we need to provide another return. And that's just going to be uh, some kind of debug text. So we'll say no map found. Now that one shouldn't happen, but we at least need a, a debug return to pass back if for some reason this doesn't work. So now if we save that, move back up to this section where we're getting the, uh, the current level name, Rather than just returning that, what we're going to do is we will comment this out in case we want to return to this later. We're going to create another f string. We're going to call this one current level name. So we still need to use the same variable name because that's being referenced down here. Uh, but rather than getting it directly from the world, because we're doing that in the function down here, what we can do is we can now say that current level name equals clean level string. We want to pass in the, uh, the current world. So that's the u object that we're passing around. So we'll get world. So that's the argument which is being filled in for the world context. We're passing that in here, getting the uh, streaming levels prefix from it, cleaning that off, and we're returning that to be the current level name. If we save this and we go and compile, we should hopefully find that regardless of whether we play this from the editor or a standalone build, this is now providing the correct name for the game to run through and find it from our array list, obviously without the prefix. Okay, so compile failed, see what happened. Uh, now this is saying that my construct is not allowed, uh, which is odd to the constructor. Um, the constructor is up here, and <laughs> so I'm just swapping back and forth. I'm not sure what's going on here. So yeah, well, I'll, I'll allow it to take me to the C++ section. So F string, that's fine. Uh, okay, <laughs> I've made another constructor down here. I forgot to give it the actual function name. So we've called this the clean level name string. What do we call this? Clean level string, I think. Yeah. So just double check that we've actually declared the function and not the constructor again. So we'll give this another go on a, uh, give this another compile. That may have been the only problem. Yeah. So that was fine. A bit worried about that. Can we clear this? Do another compile. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's all good. So now if we play this from the viewport, we can see that the level name is now main one. So if we complete this, we should be loaded into main two and then main three. So just made a quick small function to clean up the prefix on uh, getting the level name in C++, something you don't need to worry about in Blueprint. And of course, just to confirm that this isn't breaking the built game that you would use uh, or that you'd build out, we'll do a quick standalone test as well. For some reason it's asking me to build this, um, but that should be fine. And there we go. So level name is main one. And if we get through again, we're going to go to main two and so on. So everything is now working. We have the new score uh, widget being uploaded properly and we're being passed around to the correct levels. It's going to load us back into this level if we die. And then if we do complete this, then we'll have the game over or the game complete window. So that's all working. We have all of this done in C++ now. And hopefully that's been a good introduction to C++ for kind of getting into it from a beginner standpoint. It's also hopefully been a bit more useful um, because we've seen how to do this in Blueprint and then how to adapt that across to C++ if you wanted to make that update and uh, change across. So we're doing very, very little in Blueprints now. Uh, if we look at this, we can start getting rid of our old class if you wanted to clean up uh, the endpoints and so on. I'm a bit worried about doing that on a video without a backup, actually, so I won't do that now. Uh, that is exactly when everything goes wrong. So what we can look at, though, is that we're doing very, very small amounts of work, if any, inside of our Blueprint classes. So they're here, but um, everything should be a bit more efficient, as everyone knows, with C++ versus Blueprint. In fact, I can't remember any classes where we are 
using any logic in the blueprint. The blueprint's really now just a, a visual holder, so it's faster for us to change the scale of things and update variables. The only real blueprint work going on is the very small amounts in the widgets, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, originally, before I find that fix to create our small cleaner for the level string, I was contemplating having the level select stuff put back in the blueprint and then just calling that and exposing it as a callable function. But I wanted to try and keep as much of this as possible in C++ and I think we've managed to do that. So, um, and that that's pretty much it. So I think that wraps up this series. I can't see anything which isn't working as we'd want it to. You can obviously come back in remove that string because that's going to be there otherwise uh, forever. You can come back in, start adding new levels now, adding different obstacles and different types of obstacles. Hopefully you've got the understanding of how to do that. And I have focused these last few videos quite a lot on debugging, so hopefully that's proven useful and not just boring to people. I've noticed in the comments that seems to be where people are struggling, is not understanding how to find what's going wrong or knowing where to look. So I've tried spending a bit more time rather than just going through and saying this will get this to work, just do it. Hopefully that little bit of information on how I broke down a problem that I've never come across before. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, lovely lead in there to uh, leave a like and share the video around. That's always appreciated. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the playlists on this channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.